Welcome to Lake of the Isles Lutheran Church. We're delighted you're here. You're just in time. We have a special prelude today. It is a new piece called Lamento, written by our organist Cristiano Risotto, and together with a flute player who happens to be my niece, Rachel Haugrut. And they're ready to play right now. Come on in.
Good morning and welcome to Lake of the Isles Lutheran Church on this, the second Sunday in the season of Easter. This Sunday is traditionally known as Low Sunday, as low attendance, after the great crowds that gather on Easter. Of course, on a day like today when all is virtual, we have no idea whether this is a low Sunday or not, but we are delighted that you are here to hear again the familiar story, which is a part of the second Sunday of Easter, and that is the story of the disciple, the doubting Thomas. And so on this day, as we begin this Easter season, we begin with a time of remembering our own baptism. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Uh, as many as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. <laughs> on the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women went to the tomb, taking spices which they had prepared, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, behold, Two men stood by them in dazzling apparel, and as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise.
communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who die, may we who have not seen have faith in you and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. Happy Easter. How are you? It's fun to be able to say Happy Easter still. We are in the Easter season, remember, and we have six more Sundays, I think, of it. And that's pretty fun. So I hope you're doing well this morning. I um, wanted to start with something to show you that I have in this envelope. And I'm going to see if you can follow what I'm going to do. I have a dollar bill, a rubber band, and two paper clips. You'll notice that they are not connected right now. So what I'm going to do without touching the two paper clips together is I'm going to make them connect and I'm going to have the rubber band catch them. Do you think I can do it or do you think I can't? Let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to put the rubber band on the dollar bill to kind of get it started. And I'm going to take one paper clip and clip it right there. And then I'm going to get the rubber band in between here. And then I'm going to do the other paper clip. Now I'm going to have a zoom in here so you can see the paper clips are not touching each other and the rubber band's in the middle. Okay, you ready? Let's see what happens. I am not touching anything but the dollar bill and, boink, I have to get it so I can show you what happened. Look, they're connected and the rubber band caught them just like that. Magic, huh? Was that cool? So how many of you believed that I could do it? Well, thank you. How many of you doubted that that's even possible? I don't blame you because I wasn't sure if it was going to work either, but it did, so I'm happy about that. So today's story has to do with someone who had some doubts. So I wanted to show you something that maybe you, you possibly could have doubted what was going on. So in our story today, it's the night that Jesus rose from the dead, and the disciples are scared. They are hiding, they are in a house, and they are in a room, and the door is locked. And suddenly, Jesus appears. And he says to them, first thing, peace be with you. And then he shows the disciples his hands and his side. And the disciples are so excited that they realize this is Jesus. Oh my goodness. So exciting. And Jesus again says, peace be with you. And calms them. And he says, God has sent me to you. Now go and tell everyone. Now, there was one disciple who was not there, and his name was Thomas. So when Thomas came back to the room, Jesus had left by now. The disciples told Thomas about it, and he's like, I don't believe that. That did not happen. And the disciples, well, yes, it was. And Thomas said, unless I actually see him and I see the wounds in his hands and his side, I'm not going to believe you. So about a week later, Thomas is with the disciples in the room, and suddenly Jesus appears. And guess what he says again? Peace be with you. And then he says, Thomas, come over here. Come and see me. And he shows him his hands and his side. And Thomas is overcome. He's like, my Lord and my God, it is you. And Jesus says to him, you believe because you saw me and you saw my wounds. But there are people who do not see me and they still believe. And blessed are those who are able to do that. And what I love about that is it's like Jesus is talking to us because we have not seen Jesus. Jesus didn't suddenly walk into the room, but yet we have faith and we can believe. But I do know that sometimes we have questions and we have doubts, and that's okay because God loves us even when we doubt and we wonder. Someone once said to me that doubts are kind of like having ants in the pants. We kind of keep moving when we have those, but we also can do some thinking and some growing, and best of all, we can do some believing. And when we have doubts, know that God helps us out when that happens. 
and God gives us what we need for our faith to grow. There's also something else that catches my attention in this story, and that's when God, Jesus says, peace be with you. He says that lots of times when they are feeling afraid, and I think that might be something important for us to know that that's something that we can say to each other. And what a great thing to share, because when you say peace be with you, you are saying calm and peace and love and good, happy thoughts that you're sharing. When we worship together, we do a sharing of the peace, and we are giving all of that good stuff to each other. So since we can't be together, let's share the peace with each other in a different way. And if you can do it with me, we're going to do it in sign language. So this is how you say peace. Go like that and like that. B is like that. This is with and you. So if we say it together, let's all do it together and share the peace. Peace be with you. So this week, I want you to think about peace. I want you to think about calm and happy thoughts and talk with the people around you and find out what gives them peace. And then you share with them what gives you peace and then practice that together. And know that when there are times when you might not feel peaceful, that you can talk to God and God will meet you right where you are and he will help you find that peace that you need. So the other thing I hope that you can do this week is figure out how you can share God's peace with others. Even though we are not together and you're not together with maybe some family members and friends, share God's peace this way in a really creative way. Can you do that? I think that would be awesome. All right, so one last thing. If you want to know how I did my little magic trick, send me an email, and I'll give you the inside scoop. Sound good? All right, so I'll see you next week. Peace be with you. Bye-bye. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith being more precious than gold, that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord, but he said to them, 
unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger, the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the sign in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God and the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified and the conscious violent. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in the glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace to you. From God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It is perhaps an urban legend, but there was a thrifty and cost-conscious business executive whose office had a burned out six foot fluorescent bulb. Rather than pay the exorbitant price of having the maintenance department replace the bulb, the executive decided secretly to replace the bulb himself. So he snuck into his office early one morning with a new six foot fluorescent bulb and replaced the old one. He then planned to leave the office late take the burned out bulb with him on the subway and dispose it of it at a construction site near his home. When he entered the subway car, he held the old six foot fluorescent bulb upright and waited for his stop. Then a strange thing happened. Other people entered the subway and they too began to hold on to his six foot bulb as if it were a standing support. By the time the subway arrived at the executive stop, five different people were holding on to his six-foot fluorescent bulb. What was the thrifty business executive to do? He simply walked off the subway and left them holding the bulb. <laughs> Human beings have a fondness for holding on to things even if they don't really offer the stability that they appear to. And at times, this can include the followers of Jesus, especially the, for those whose faith has never been tested or tempered. Thomas, you see, was not the only follower of Jesus to be filled with skepticism. I imagine that every one of us in our most painful and honest hours has had moments of doubt. We're not proud of them. 
but they're real. Just the same. My friends, if that is how you have experienced the good news of Jesus' resurrection from the dead this Easter, in the face of the coronavirus, you are not alone. And the story of doubting Thomas should give you consolation and encouragement that Christ will not leave you. Even if you feel your faith is as fragile as someone clinging to the false support of a six-foot fluorescent ball. We should never criticize the honest but skeptical Thomas, nor should we judge him as a lesser apostle. For three years, Thomas had trusted and acted on the words which his friend Jesus had spoken. He understood that his master's journey would lead him to a tree on a hill called Calvary on the road to Jerusalem. He sounded the battle cry to the other disciples, let us also go with him that we may die with him. There was no doubt that Thomas loved Jesus. And yet when the expected truly did happen, when his friend Jesus was crucified and buried, Thomas was crushed beneath the weight of the cross. He didn't want to share his loss. He didn't want others to experience his pain. He wanted to be alone with his grief. And so it came to pass that on the first day of the week when Jesus was raised from the dead and returned to his disciples to offer his peace and stand in their midst, Thomas was not there. Interestingly, the other disciples were doubtful and skeptical as well. The unconfirmed rumors of the resurrection in St. John's Gospel, started by Mary Magdalene, Peter, and the beloved disciple, had brought them neither understanding nor clarity to the disciples. Instead, they were hiding in the upper room behind closed doors, where they remained perplexed, amazed, cynical, doubtful, and fearful, all at the same time. Yes, they were like many of us. They were conflicted. They knew what they should believe. They remembered what Jesus had said. They trusted what he had promised would happen. But now at the moment when they had the good news of Jesus' resurrection from the dead, they were filled with doubt and fear. That may surprise you. But maybe that is the message that you need to hear this day. Good news does not necessarily erase human fear even though we trust and believe that it should. Yes, good news, incredible news, should ignite hope. But my friends, even hope doesn't always eliminate genuine fear. So there the disciples gathered again in the upper room in the familiar place where Jesus had been present with them. In that very place, they desperately longed for the strength and hope to combat a new and unfamiliar fear. An empty tomb, you see, wasn't enough to confirm all that Jesus had promised was true. The disciples needed something more. Suddenly in their midst, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. There was no doubt that it was Jesus. They recognized his scars. And only then do we read, did the disciples rejoice? Yes, they were astonished, ashamed, and afraid. They all felt as the most unlikely and undeserving of disciples, unworthy of being Jesus' apostles to spread the good news. Then Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, received the Holy Spirit. The disciples' eyes were opened, and their fears were calmed. Which brings us back to the story of Doubting Thomas. When Jesus' disciples saw and experienced what they experienced in that upper room was really all that Thomas desired. 
Too often we focus on Thomas's doubt. But the lonely disciples' request was merely what the others had already experienced. The other disciples had celebrated the resurrection, but for Thomas, the good news remained too good to be true. He wanted to believe, but he simply couldn't. Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and plus my, place my hand in his side, I will not believe. Thomas was left holding that six-foot fluorescent bulb as the subway came to a screeching halt. Thomas's desire for certainty in the midst of his doubts and fears is perhaps the same thing that we all desire in the face of the coronavirus. We long for the assurance and confidence that all will be well. We want to know that God is in charge even as leaders are struggling to find their way. We want to know that we can place our lives, our cares, our fears into the ultimate hope that is found in a loving God, yes, even when we cannot see the ending. My friends, the hope-filled witness of Thomas' story is the willingness of Jesus to meet the struggling disciple exactly where he needed to be met. There was no dis criticism of Thomas's request. Rather, Jesus offered him his own simple invitation. Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. A week earlier, the disciples had rejoiced in the upper room. And now at last, Thomas, could give his praise as well. Thomas, of course, had an advantage when he was struggling with his doubts. He, like the other disciples, could go back to that familiar upper room where they were renewed by Jesus' living presence. For us at Lake of the Isles, however, and for countless believers around the world, the doors to the familiar sacred places that have nurtured our faith in times of trouble are locked. But my friends, you needn't give in to doubt and fear. Martin Luther wrote, when the believer feels himself doubting, let him practice faith. Fight against doubt and labor to capture certainty. God is to be found in other places. So where should you begin your search? This morning I would like to commend to you three places where you should expect to encounter the Lord and to be strengthened in faith. Today you have placed yourself within the reach of worship, and that is good. Even if it is simply virtual, your decision last night or this morning to participate in worship, even knowing who the preacher would be today, was that first moment in your experience to see the Lord and believe. You put your foot directly on the path of God when you crossed the threshold into worship. And you, now you are being drawn into that spoken word. In Holy Scripture, God chooses to be infinite and profound. For scripture is like an open window that God enters with his epic story of redemption and reconciliation and striding through the whole story is that figure of Jesus, the incarnate word. Secondly, you encounter the deep wells of faith when you open yourself to the mystery of prayer. Now, as a church, we regularly focus on the anointing power of the water and the word and holy baptism, and in the mystery of the bread and wine of holy communion. But in this time of social distancing, we are reminded that God uses other means of grace as well. Yes, in the sweet hour of prayer, you can share your thoughts with God, even when you cannot find the words, and he will answer you in ways that you cannot imagine. That is how God will speak to you. 
until that day when at the Lord's table his pierced hand will offer you the gift of his living presence again. And his own voice will whisper into your heart his promise of peace and salvation. Finally, you may experience the Lord's presence when you enter into Christian fellowship with others. Jesus promised that wherever two or three are gathered in his name, there he will be present in their midst. You and I have not been called into our own personal relationship with God, estranged from the needs of our neighbors and community. But we have been called into a vibrant fellowship known as the body of Christ. And the meeting of believers where mutual joys and sorrows are shared at the level of a common faith, there you and I have every right to believe that Christ will make his presence known. In the faces and challenges of doubts of the coronavirus, I ask you, what support are you holding on to? When life makes a sudden stop, will you find yourself holding on to something solid? Or will you discover that you are grasping on to nothing more than a six-foot fluorescent bulb? My friends, like Doubting Thomas, Jesus welcomes you and accepts you as you are and where you are with all your doubts and concerns. And when, then he gives you that strength to get you where you need to be. Jesus invited Thomas to touch the mark of the nails and the wound of the spear in his side. Yes, he invited him to experience his life and death and new resurrected life. And that is his invitation to you as well. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.
gifts that you have given to Lake of the Isles or just church to support our ministries throughout this time, we invite you again, either by sending your gifts to the church or going online to show your own gratitude and thankfulness to God for the many ways in which he continues to touch your life. We continue now with our offering that Easter day with joy was bright.
merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make them in abundance, just as you do with our lives. Feed us again at this table for service in your name, in the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. Uplifted by the promises of hope, of healing, and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Open the doors we close, O God, when we fear those who worship you in different ways. Guide us to unity and harmony, so that we may come to respect and cherish our commonalities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the paths we ignore, O God, when we prioritize financial gain and convenience over listening to the groaning of the earth. Inspire all to care for the world you have made, so that living things might thrive. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the rooms we lock, O God, to those who live without a homeland or place of safety. We pray that generous nations offer refuge and peace for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the hearts we close, O God, to the cries of those in pain. We pray for those isolated physically or emotionally through incarceration, addiction, mental illness, chronic suffering, grief, and all in need, especially Shirley Carlson, Deb Benson, Gary Olson, Sam Peterson, Jim Peterson, Sam Brown, Bruce Payne, Lynn Williamson, Palooza Ramos, Mary McCarthy, Trevor Daniel, and Tom Cons. We also lift up to you the family of Pierre Lemire, on the death of his father, Albert, and his uncle, Bill. We also lift up with joy our distant but beloved members, Ryan and Kayla Houle, who are celebrating the birth of their twin sons, Jackson and Surin. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the ways of love, O oh God, in the pursuit of peace throughout the world, and bless the efforts of missionaries, healthcare professionals, activists for women and children, and relief workers, especially those who find themselves in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, our peace and our strength, we pray for our nation and for the world as we face new uncertainties around the coronavirus. Protect the most vulnerable among us especially all who are currently sick or in isolation. Grant wisdom, patience, and clarity to healthcare workers, especially as their work caring for others puts them at great risk. Guide us and our leaders as we consider how best to prepare and respond in our families, in our congregation, in our workplaces, in our communities. Give us courage to face these days, not with fear, but with compassion, concern, and acts of service, trusting that you abide with us always. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Into your hands, God of abundant grace, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Together we pray the prayer your Son, our Savior, first taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever.
receive now the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Again, we welcome you this day to our worship service here at Lake of the Isles Lutheran Church. We're very grateful for the guest musician, for uh, Rachel Haug Root, for being a part of our worship service with the flute music today. Yes, she is uh, my niece, and I'm delighted that I can proudly say she has played today for all of you. And in just a few moments, we'll hear more of her music as our postlude together with Chris Rizzotto. I want to also um, make note of some of the things that we are trying this coming week. And for those longing for Bible study, we will try to do one virtually on Wednesday morning. If you would like the Zoom connection, please uh, write to me here at Lake of the Isles Lutheran Church, lati.org, or the other possibility, a little more exciting for those of the older uh, group, that is Growlers in Theology, and that will be on Thursday night. You're welcome to participate in that one as well, virtually. Again, we thank you for the many gifts which you have given to us at this Easter time. It has made us walk forth with great confidence of the work that we are doing here at Lake of the Isles Lutheran Church. And we pray that you will continue to be blessed in this Easter time. With these words, go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank